they don't have direct power. You know, the, 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 these people are mainly in hiding. Um, they are in neighboring countries. They, um, they've been forced to flee by the coup. And so the importance of this though, is um, is partly symbolic to sort of say, we're still here. We are the legitimate representatives of the people of Myanmar. Uh, we are the um, victors of last November's elections. And, you know, our colleagues, you know, Aung San Suu Kyi, the leader, have, have, have been jailed. But, you know, we are sort of setting up this, this structure, this shadow government. And it's also to lobby internationally. It's to try and give other governments um, a source of contact that is not the junta. So they're running this campaign to try and deny the legitimacy of the junta. And this is you know, been taking place in the protests on the streets and the strike movement, but also on this political front. Also, importantly, it does involve not just politicians from Aung San Suu Kyi's deposed National League for Democracy, but, um, eth you know, eth eth ethnic figures as well. Now, you know, Myanmar is a very sort of complex ethnic mosaic, and um, the NLD was often criticised for being uh, very focused on the Burman Buddhist majority. And uh, so there is an attempt here to broaden out with representatives who are Karen and Kachin and Shan. So, you know, it's part of this concerted effort to deny the junta the ability to run the government, be it, you know, in international fora on the ground or in the strikes. So, you know, it's it's not that they have individual power, although they have been nominated to specific ministries, but it's really just part of this ongoing political campaign to say, you know, we, we don't accept this coup and we will continue to fight you.